the heart of the earth, and the sign of the prophet Jonah. The Redeemer of mankind foretold his death in words that have both intrigued and confused people ever since. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Over time, differing interpretations concerning the meaning of the sign of Jonah have been offered. It has been suggested that time period is one of the following. 1. From the crucifixion Friday morning to the resurrection on Sunday morning. 2. Wednesday night to Saturday night. 3. Burial time in the grave alone. Friday night to Sunday morning. Each of these interpretations is based on faulty premises. There is a false assumption the Israelites used the pagan Julian calendar, which is not true. When Yahushua was alive, the Israelites used the loony solar calendar of creation, which has no alignment with the Julian planetary days of Friday, Venus Day, Saturday, Saturn's Day, and Sunday. And there are other problems. from the crucifixion Friday morning to the resurrection on Sunday morning. Many believe the sign refers to the time period from the crucifixion to the resurrection. This is incorrect, for the Savior was crucified mid-morning at the time of the morning sacrifice on Abib 14. Parts of three days are spanned, but only two nights. Wednesday night to Saturday night. Others believe the sign required Yahushua to spend 72 hours in the sepulchre after the crucifixion, which occurred on Wednesday of the Julian calendar. This is also incorrect, for it places the resurrection at Saturday night. The Jews did not use the Julian calendar. Scripture clearly shows the resurrection did not occur the night of Abib 15. Christ arose at dawn, the morning of Abib 16. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Friday night to Saturday night. Also incorrect is the assumption only Yahushua's time spent in Joseph's tomb qualifies as time in the heart of the earth. Lazarus had just risen from death in a tomb after four days and the Pharisees who wanted a sign were very aware of it. Did Yahushua mean to repeat this miracle for fewer days and offer it as a sign? No, the sign was much more than rising from the dead after three days and nights in a tomb. The sign was to immerse himself in our sins, separated from Yahuwah as Jonah prophesied, where Yahuwah would not hear.
pay for our sins with suffering, death, and on the third day, rise again. Three points understood clearly reveal the true meaning of the sign of the prophet Jonah. One, inclusive versus exclusive counting. Two, the meaning of the phrase heart of the earth. Three, when the three days and three nights began. Inclusive versus exclusive counting. Israelites and Romans arrived at chronological thought much differently than we do, as most count exclusively today. In exclusive counting, you start from zero. A child in Canada or the United States turns one year old a year from the day of her birth. Inclusive counting starts the count at one, thus in some oriental countries, a child is considered a year old at birth, and two years of age a year later. With inclusive reckoning, any portion of a day is counted as one day. Although the Savior arose at dawn on Abib 16, this was considered the third day of the count. Heart of the Earth The heart of the Earth, too, has a much broader application than only the time Yahushua's dead body spent in the tomb itself. Scripture refers to Earth variously as the human race or the human heart. In his parable of the sower, Yahushua stated, the seed was the word that was sown in their hearts. Scripture is also clear concerning the heart of man. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The original Greek for the heart provides additional confirmation. Cardia, the heart, that is, figuratively, the thoughts or feelings, mind. Thus, the heart of the earth refers to far more than a simple physical burial in the earth. It also refers to being under the condemnation of sin. Yahushua was sinless. He had to be, or he could not have been our Redeemer. As the Redeemer, he voluntarily assumed the consequences for our sins. This was the mystery of grace that allowed a just Creator to offer justification and redemption to the repentant sinner. Yahushua accepted our sins in which he had no part, so he could offer us his righteousness in which we had no part. Now all things are of Yahuwah, who has reconciled us to himself through Yahushua, the Anointed, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that Yahuwah was in Yahushua reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of Yah in him. The entire 53rd chapter of Isaiah explains this divine exchange. But he was wounded for our transgressions. 
He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Yahuwah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. When Yahushua became sin for us, he accepted the punishment for sin. Separation from Yahuwah himself. But your iniquities have separated you from your Elohim, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. If I regard iniquity in my heart, Master Yahushua will not hear. When did the count begin? Sin's punishment endured by Yahushua means he suffered eternal separation from the Creator of all. This suffering culminated in his death. Shortly thereafter, a Roman spear brought forth twin streams of blood and water from his still corpse. However, the Redeemer's suffering did not begin with the first nail to puncture the skin or the first stripe from a Roman scourge. This is key to understanding the sign of the prophet Jonah. Yahushua's suffering began as he fell under the divine condemnation for sin in the Garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ suffered in man's stead, and the human nature of the Son of Yah staggered under the terrible horror of the guilt of sin, until from his pale and quivering lips was forced the agonizing cry, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But if there is no other way by which the salvation of fallen man may be accomplished, then not as I will, but as thou wilt. Human nature would then and there have died under the horror of the sense of sin, had not an angel from heaven strengthened him to bear the agony. Yahushua was the Lamb of Yah that takes away the sins of the world. He was crucified on Abib 14, the Passover, so that the justice of Yah would pass over repentant sinners, just as the angel of death passed over the Israelites in Egypt. However, his suffering began in the Garden of Gethsemane, after the Last Supper, on the evening of Abib 13. The power that inflicted retributive justice upon man's substitute and surety was the power that sustained and upheld the Suffering One under the tremendous weight of wrath that would have fallen upon a sinful world. Christ was suffering the death that was pronounced upon the transgressors of Yahuwah's law. It is a fearful thing for the unrepenting sinner to fall into the hands of the living Yahuwah. But never was this proved to so great an extent as in the agony of Christ, the son of the infinite Yah, when he bore the wrath of Yahuwah for a sinful world. It was in consequence of sin, the transgression of Yah's law, that the Garden of Gethsemane has become preeminently the place of suffering to a sinful world. 
no sorrow, no agony can measure with that which was endured by the Son of Yah. The sheer mental and emotional agony endured by the Savior as he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors was begun in Gethsemane. Scripture records the horrifying result. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Before his arrest, Yahushua began to bear divine wrath for sin on the night previous to his actual crucifixion. Yahushua's agonizing second death is spoken to as three days of spiritual torture in twelve passages from Scripture, beginning in Gethsemane. Matthew 16:21. Matthew 17, 22, 23. Matthew 20, 18, 19. Mark 8, 31. Mark 9, 31. Mark 10, 34. Luke 9, 22. Luke 18, 31 to 33. Luke 24, 7. Luke 24, 25 to 27. Luke 24, 45 and 46. Acts 10, 39. From that time, Yahushua began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. This latter text, Mark 8.31, is of particular note. On the walk to Emmaus, Yahushua explained his suffering and death were in fulfillment of the prophecies foretelling his manner of death. Then he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. When Christ Yahushua voluntarily accepted the condemnation of the law against all of sinful mankind, the sign of the prophet Jonah was perfectly fulfilled.